Iran just pulled off the impossible. Over 10,000 Starlink terminals. Gone. In one night. Elon Musk's unstoppable satellite network. Stopped cold. The method they used. It'll change warfare forever. And what happened next will shock you even more. This is the operation the world wasn't supposed to see. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Conflict Skies and Steel. What you're about to hear sounds like science fiction. But it happened. And it happened fast. In the early hours of a cold January morning, something unprecedented unfolded across Iran. A technological blackout of staggering proportions. Over 10,000 Starlink terminals, devices that had been quietly smuggled into the country for months, suddenly went dark. All at once. No warning. No second chances. This wasn't a malfunction. This was a hunt. A massive, coordinated operation that combined cyber warfare, signal intelligence, and old-fashioned boots on the ground. And when the dust settled, Iran had proven something terrifying. Even the most advanced satellite technology on Earth can be defeated. Let me take you inside the operation that changed everything. The story begins long before that January night. For over two years, Starlink terminals had been flowing into Iran through underground networks. Activists used them to bypass government censorship. Protesters coordinated movements through encrypted channels. Intelligence operatives communicated with handlers abroad. The Iranian government watched this happen, growing more furious by the day. But Elon Musk's constellation of satellites seemed untouchable. Orbiting 400 miles above Earth, they provided internet access that ground-based jammers couldn't reach. Traditional methods failed. Blocking cell towers? Useless. Cutting fiber optic cables? Irrelevant. The terminals just kept working. But Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps had been studying the problem. And they found the weakness. Every Starlink terminal emits a signal. A unique radio frequency signature when it connects to satellites overhead. Invisible to the naked eye, but detectable with the right equipment. Iranian engineers developed specialized direction-finding systems, mobile units that could be mounted on trucks, deployed to rooftops, hidden in plain sight across cities. These weren't crude jammers. They were precision instruments designed for one purpose, hunt and locate. For six months they mapped the country, Tehran, Isfahan, Shiraz, Tabriz, Mashhad, block by block, neighborhood by neighborhood. Every time a Starlink terminal powered on, it lit up on their screens like a beacon. Coordinates were logged. Addresses were cross-referenced. Users were identified. The IRGC built a database of targets. Over 10,000 locations. And they waited. The operation launched at 3 in the morning, simultaneous raids across every major city. Hundreds of teams moving in perfect synchronization. They hit apartment buildings and university dorms. They stormed offices and safe houses. They swept through neighborhoods where dissidents had thought they were protected by technology. The raids were surgical. Doors kicked in. Terminals seized. Arrests made. It took less than four hours to dismantle a network that had taken years to build. But here's what makes this truly terrifying. Iran didn't just find the terminals. They exploited the technology itself. Captured documents reveal that Iranian cyber units had been reverse-engineering Starlink hardware for months. They analyzed the firmware. They mapped the encryption protocols. They identified vulnerabilities in the authentication process. And when the raids began, they didn't just confiscate equipment. They injected malware. Compromised terminals were turned into surveillance tools feeding data back to intelligence servers. User lists, communication logs, contact networks, everything. Some terminals were left in place intentionally, modified to appear functional but secretly monitored. Activists who thought they were still secure kept communicating, and Iranian intelligence kept listening. It was a double blow. Physical seizure combined with digital infiltration. The international response was immediate and confused. Starlink's parent company, SpaceX, released a terse statement acknowledging service disruptions in the region, but provided no details. Western intelligence agencies scrambled to understand how Iran had pulled this off. Commercial satellite operators panicked, 
realizing their own networks might be vulnerable. Defense contractors who'd been selling Starlink-based communication systems to militaries worldwide suddenly had very uncomfortable questions to answer. Because this operation revealed something the defense establishment didn't want to admit. Satellite internet isn't invincible. It has physical components on the ground. And those components can be found, compromised, and weaponized. Think about the implications. For two decades, Western military doctrine has relied on satellite communications as the backbone of modern warfare. Drones controlled via satellite uplinks. Troops coordinating through terminals in combat zones. Intelligence gathering through constellations overhead. The assumption was always that an adversary couldn't touch those systems without shooting down satellites. An act of war that would trigger massive retaliation. Iran just proved you don't need to shoot down satellites. You just need to find the terminals on the ground, hunt them systematically, exploit their electronic signatures, and suddenly, your enemy's technological advantage evaporates. The operation cost Iran an estimated $70 million. That includes developing the detection equipment, training specialized units, and executing the nationwide sweep. $70 million to neutralize a network that had cost its operators hundreds of millions to establish. From a strategic standpoint, the return on investment was staggering. But there's a darker cost that can't be measured in money. Over 8,000 individuals were arrested in the raids. Many were activists and journalists who'd relied on Starlink to communicate safely. Many are still detained. Some have disappeared entirely. The human toll of this technological triumph is immense and ongoing. And Iran isn't keeping its methods secret. Within weeks of the operation, reports emerged of Iranian engineers traveling to Moscow, Beijing, and Caracas. Sharing techniques, selling equipment, offering training to other governments interested in replicating the operation. The blueprint for defeating Starlink is spreading. Syria has already purchased detection systems. Venezuela is conducting trials. North Korea sent observers to study Iranian methods. This is the new reality. Satellite Internet created a brief window where activists in authoritarian countries had a technological edge. That window is closing. Fast. The operation also exposed uncomfortable truths about Silicon Valley's role in geopolitics. Elon Musk positioned Starlink as a tool of freedom, providing Internet access to those living under oppressive regimes. But the technology was deployed without coordination with governments without security protocols for high-risk users, without contingency plans for when authoritarian states struck back. The terminals arrived with user manuals and optimistic promises. They left behind arrest warrants and prison sentences. Some intelligence analysts argue that Iran's success will accelerate a broader trend. State actors are adapting to the commercialization of space. They're developing capabilities specifically designed to counter civilian satellite networks now being used for military purposes. Expect more operations like this. More sophisticated. More widespread. Others believe this is a temporary setback. That encryption will improve. That terminal designs will evolve to minimize detectable signatures. That the technology will stay one step ahead of the countermeasures. Maybe. But right now, Iran is winning that race. Here's the bottom line. 10,000 terminals seized in one night. A satellite network that was supposed to be unstoppable stopped. Not through brute force, but through patience, intelligence, and technical sophistication. Iran studied the problem, developed a solution, executed flawlessly. This operation will be studied in military academies for decades. It's already reshaping how defense planners think about satellite communications. It's forcing a fundamental reassessment of what secure means in the age of commercial space technology. And it's sent a clear message to activists worldwide. The tools you think protect you can be turned against you. The world changed that January night, quietly, without headlines or breaking news alerts. But the defense industry knows. Intelligence agencies know. And now you know. Iran didn't just shut down Starlink terminals. They shut down assumptions. They proved that space-based communication systems have earthly vulnerabilities. They demonstrated that authoritarian states can strike back against technological resistance. 
and they showed that in the shadow war between freedom and control, control just gained a devastating new weapon. This is the operation the world wasn't supposed to see, but now we have, and nothing will be the same. Thanks for watching Conflict Skies and Steel. Hit subscribe for more stories from the cutting edge of modern conflict. And remember, in this new era, even the sky isn't safe.